It's hard to read a newspaper, watch a TV newscast, or listen to talk radio without hearing something about the future of American health care. As policymakers debate the merits of replacing the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, we're joined by an analyst with expertise on that topic. Tevi Troy is CEO of the American Health Policy Institute. He's also a former deputy secretary in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and an aide in George W. Bush's White House. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mitch. So this obviously is one of the big news items that we've been dealing with really ever since the the election. And we knew that Donald Trump would be the new president is what's going to happen in the future of government involvement in American health care. As you're watching this debate, what are you focusing on? I'm focusing on making sure that we maintain the key building blocks of the American health policy system. So for example, 177 million people get their health care through their employers. You want to make sure that that, that continues. Uh, a lot of people get health care through Medicare and Medicaid. You want to make sure to the extent that we're committing resources to meet our promises to the elderly and to the impoverished, that we have systems in place that are, are maintaining those systems, but in a responsible way. Obviously, I think there's too much spending and too much fraud in some of those programs, and I think they can be reined in. But they are, the, you put those together, and those are the basic building blocks where the vast majority of Americans get their coverage. And then you have to worry about where the people who've been falling through the cracks. And that was the whole reason for the ACA, the Obamacare debate, is that, that too many people have been falling through the cracks, people who aren't employed or people who don't have an employer that provides health insurance. And then, you, so a, you have to think about those people and how to fit them in, but that doesn't necessarily have to govern how the entire rest of the system operates. It, it's, I, I think it's short-sighted to say there's a, a group of people who fall through the cracks and we're going to remake the entire system for that group. We need to focus a program or a series of programs or a policy approaches that help those specific people without necessarily upending the entire apple cart. A lot of the debate these days has been about uh, repealing and or replacing the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. And some people have said, why not just repeal the, the law that was passed in 2010 and go back to what we had before 2010? Is that even possible? It really isn't possible. Look, the Affordable Care Act has a lot of problems with it, uh, huge premium increases, I think a lot of uh, incursions on liberty, including the individual mandate and, and the employer mandate, uh, limited choices in its networks in terms of insurers falling out. So there's a lot of problems with the ACA, but there were a lot of problems with our system beforehand, including way too many people who were uninsured. So I think there are ways to get to a more value-driven system, a system that uses our heavy spending on health care. You know, we spend about 18% of our GDP on health care, which is twice what our, our European allies spend about. And so we can use those resources more effectively to get more care to more people. So I don't want to go back to the old system. I don't want to use the ACA. I think we need a third way going forward. That is the voice of Tevi Troy. He is CEO of the American Health Policy Institute, also a former deputy secretary in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services during the Bush administration. As we've heard the various debates about how to move forward, uh, are, you, are you mainly encouraged, discouraged, a mix about what people are talking about? Are they focusing on the right things? I'm always discouraged when things are too focused on the politics and does this party win or does that party win. I, I think it was unfortunate that the ACA went forward with only Democratic votes and that meant that this unipartisan approach didn't include Republicans. And, and that's a problem because throughout our history, we have had controversies over social welfare legislation, but all previous pieces of social welfare legislation have passed with bipartisan support, which meant that the American people swallowed it afterwards and moved on and said, okay, this is something that they agreed on in Washington and now we're going forward. Given the unipartisan approach of the ACA, there's now a sense that the Republicans are going to do it with no Democratic votes, in large part because the Democrats say we absolutely refuse to cooperate. I would think that in President Trump, you'd have someone who Democrats might look at and say, this guy's not a traditional Republican. Perhaps we can make deals with him, but there's been no interest thus far from the Democrats. So I would like to see a sensible but also bipartisan approach going forward that really allowed the American people to say, okay, both parties have had their say, they've worked together on this, and this is the way we're going to use a, work with our health system going forward. I'm not seeing evidence of that right now. One of the things that has struck me in talking to people who are experts in your field, the, the field of health care, is some people saying, you know, the Affordable Care Act spent a lot of time, a lot of political resources, a lot of money, and really dealt with health insurance 
but didn't necessarily address some of the key problems in health care itself. Uh, are we missing the boat if we're focusing only on the insurance aspect and not on things like access to care and improving the care that we have? Yeah, the, the ACA said it was going to be about bending the cost curve down, but it really was it was really based on coverage. And the ACA's proponents say correctly that more people are covered as a result of the ACA. But when you subsidize something and you make it illegal not to do that something, then you're going to have more of it. And it's just a basic fact of life. And so by doing this focus on coverage only, I think the ACA did a disservice and didn't really look at ways to improve the system. Now, when Republicans are looking for their own approach, they obviously have to deal with what they've been handed to in the form of the ACA, and that shapes their approach as well. So I think the, the problems, the original sin, if you will, of the ACA continues to cause problems going forward. So as the legislation moves forward, that would change, repeal, replace Obamacare. Does that mean there's still going to need to be some work done outside of that whole context to deal with American health care and government's proper role? Oh, absolutely. But I think that some of the key things that have to happen could be led by the private sector. I think we need to move to a more value-based health care system. What does that mean? It means where people take cost and quality issues into account when they are making their own decisions. Right now, with a heavily third-party based payment system, people don't think about where they're going to get their care or where the doctors uh, have the best prices or where the doctors provide the best value. If you had a more value-based driven system, then you would potentially be able to drive down costs and drive quality up. We've seen this in every other form of our economy. I mean, if you look at the iPhones or if you look at uh, TV cameras or even radio equipment, all these things, the quality keeps going up and the cost keeps going down because of the power of consumerism. We have not unleashed the power of consumerism in our health care system largely because of third-party payments. And I understand that in the parts of health care that aren't affected by third party, you actually do see things like the LASIK. laser eye surgery. Yep. Yeah. LASIK's yeah. a great example. Here is something where the technology continues to improve. The price continues to go down because people pay out of pocket. And what does that mean? It means they price compare, and they will drive from one end of a state to another end of the state. They might drive to another state. Sometimes they may drive to an another country to get better services. And it's because of this power of consumerism that the providers have to improve their product and reduce their costs. If you have third-party payments, then you're going to have providers who know that they effectively have either a monopoly or a disengaged consumer base. And the consumer base is just going to go wherever they go because that's where their insurance company tells them or because that's closest to their house. It's not necessarily getting the best care at the best price. In the brief time that we have left, how confident are you that once this debate on Capitol Hill is concluded, we're going to end up with something better than what we have now under the Affordable Care Act? Well, once you have the political process at work, I, I lose a lot of confidence in the ability to get better things. I think the Affordable Care Act has been extremely problematic, so I'm, I'm somewhat optimistic that we'll have something better than it, but I don't think we're going to solve all the problems of American health care with government action.